From family events, to volunteer opportunities, to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Welcome to Community Hotline. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about the American Diabetes Association. With me tonight, I have Michael Paulson. Uh, Michael is the Manager in Special Events and Corporate Relations. And Mandy Bentley, who is a dietitian, a diabetes educator, a volunteer, and a Katie Couric wannabe. Yes, ma'am. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being on the oh, show thanks tonight. Thanks for having us. Now, uh, Michael, maybe you could start out telling me a little bit about the American Diabetes Association. Um, What's, what's the reason for the organization? What's your main focus? Well, our main focus is really to prevent and cure diabetes and to improve the lives of all people impacted by diabetes. Okay, well that's kind of a big big uh, undertaking, yes. I think, because I mean, every time you turn around, there's something in the news about diabetes and how it's become almost epidemic from, from what I hear. Mandy, what, what is your role? What, I mean, obviously you're um, a dietitian and an educator. What all do you do for the American Diabetes Association? So I am actually the co-chair of the American Diabetes Association Expo that's uh -huh. going to be taking place in May. Okay. And so that is my primary role, but I do whatever else that they may want me to. Diabetes is really a passion of mine to help people to learn how to take better care of themselves so that they can li live more of a healthy life. Okay, now I know we have two different events coming up. The expo that you mentioned, there's also a, a diabetes alert day. Yes. What, what, is the, what, is the, what is the main thing that you want people to know? People that don't know anything about diabetes, um, about the possible risks, what it can do to you, what are some of the main things that people need to know? Well, well first, if we could just share that there are 26 million Americans that actually have diabetes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yes, it is. And there are 79 million Americans that have prediabetes. Of the 26 million that do have diabetes, 7 million of those people don't even know it. So Alert Day is a way for us to really help people take a risk test to learn more how at risk they may be, or even if they have prediabetes or diabetes itself. So if someone has prediabetes, that means <coughs> that they are, they're on the path Correct. to getting it. Mm -hmm. And if they don't change something, then, then they're probably going to get it. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. What are it, some of those things that they can do to change it? Um, well, there's a lot of things. Um, primarily, um, addressing diet mm -hmm. and exercise can really be a key factor in helping to, to get someone who is currently uh, impacted by prediabetes to get them to go the other direction mm -hmm. as opposed to moving into having diabetes. Right, right. And and sometimes you can change it, can't you? I mean, if you actually have diabetes, can you actually reverse that you, or, or you not? You cannot. So you cannot. once you have been diagnosed with diabetes, you always will have diabetes. Okay. Now you can maybe manage it a little bit differently. Uh -huh. You know, there are different ways. Some people manage just by watching what they eat and being more active. Others need to take medications that are pills and other people need to take insulin injections but there's not one type of medication that's any worse than another. Mm. They're all important. So whatever you need or whatever your doctor has prescribed for you to take care of your diabetes is what's important to do. Okay. So even though you have it under control, it is sort of a misconception. Some people think now it's under control, I don't have it anymore. Right, right, okay. You have it, you have it. Correct. But obviously if you can control it with diet and exercise, that would be the, the preferable it way, would, would it not? fantastic. Yeah. You're familiar with Ken Gordon, the uh, Yes. Yeah, the chef that has a column in the Oregonian, and I always read his column because he's been working on controlling his diabetes through the um, you know, use of exercise and, uh, and good eating. And, I, and I've been enjoying reading that and seeing how, you know, how it's really not, it's not impossible to do that. What mm -hmm. do you, in working with people, do you find when, you, when somebody is diagnosed with diabetes, are they resistant to that change or people pretty much gung-ho and open to making those kind of changes in their lifestyle. I think it's so individual. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a shock for a lot of people and for other people they said it was a long time coming. You know, uh -huh. it was in 
all of their family members had had diabetes. So it's really personal in terms of how they accept it. Right. But you know, it's not life altering in terms of you can't eat certain foods ever again. So as a dietitian, I'd always hear, I'm never gonna be able to eat my favorite foods. <laughs> everything, sure. everything can be eaten, but it's in moderation and being really careful. Right. So people with diabetes have to eat more healthy, mm -hmm. but everybody in America, especially since we just said 79 million have prediabetes, should also be eating the same exact way. Of course. So yeah. it's not a weird kind of it's meal not some plan. funky diet. No. No. <laughs> it's still shopping at Safeway or Fred right, Meyer. Right. So, so the the alert day that you're going to be talking about um, risk factors and and how how you may be at risk. What are some of those risk factors? Either one of you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mandy. So, yeah, what, so risk factors for for diabetes. What you know? What what are the things that people should be aware of? If I, I there are yeah. certain minority groups that are more prone to diabetes yes, than others. Yes, there are. So the African American, Latino, are two of the larger groups. Also, um, if someone is having some of the symptoms, would be you know if they're having more frequent urination, if they're more hungry, if they're having blurry vision. Some of these symptoms actually can tell you that you may be at risk, okay. that these are areas to, to be concerned with right. and go see your doctor and get a blood sugar taken. Which those can be symptoms of other things, of course, but in combination that it might be something to, to pay attention Especially to. Especially if you have the family history, if you're overweight, overweight, if you're over 45 years of age, if you're not as active as you may want mm -hmm. to be or should be, those can be other risk factors. What about women versus men? Pretty equal. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about uh, juvenile diabetes? That's, that's become a big deal, has it not? I mean... So we now just say that there is type 1 and type 2 diabetes. We no longer use you know, the terms okay. juvenile. Because it's all the same. Well, you know, type 1 just doesn't develop in the youth. Older people can develop type 1 diabetes too. So the real distinction is a hormone insulin that the body mm. produces and insulin is the only hormone that lowers blood sugar. Every other hormone that we make raises blood sugar. Okay. So in type one, they absolutely make no insulin. And so they have to take insulin injections in order to lower their blood okay. sugar. And in type two, they make insulin and sometimes they make even more than they need, but their body can't use it. And one of the reasons they can't use it is really being a little overweight. Okay, okay, so type one is the one where you're gonna have to have injections. You're gonna Correct. have to give yourself the daily injections. Type Correct. two, you may or may not. Yeah, may or may not, but you can possibly control it with your diet and exercise. Correct. Is that correct? That okay. is correct. Okay. So the Diabetes Alert Day is going to um, give people the opportunity to see if they're at risk. I went online to your website. I did the risk test. Very easy, very simple. Awesome. I was very happy to see I was a low risk. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, the Diabetes Expo, that takes it a step further? What, what, are you, what are you doing there? So the Diabetes Expo, it's really an annual event. This will be our 10th year. And we have generally around 5,000 people from Oregon and Southwest Washington that come and learn. Yeah. Funny you mentioned Ken Gordon because he's going to be one of the chefs oh, is he? Oh, good. at Expo. So really helping people to learn maybe how to take their current recipes and make mm -hmm. them just a little bit more healthy. We also have local physicians and psychologists come and provide presentations on topics such as Diabetes 101 or foot care, um, really diabetes burnout, those kinds mm. of things. We'll have health screenings where they can get blood sugar, cholesterol, their eyes checked. There's a space for the type ones, uh, the children to come in and have an area to learn and to play while there's another section, the Jim Hansen Memorial, where the parents of people with type 1 diabetes, the kids with type 1, can go and learn how to help take care of their, their children. Wonderful. So it's a free event. It right. starts at 9 and it ends at 4, so lots of time to come and learn. And where is this taking place? At the Oregon Convention Center. At the Convention Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's on May 4th. Great. Yep. Saturday, May 4th. Okay, good. You going to be there? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what are you going to be doing there? Walk um, around schmoozing? <laughs> well, a little bit of that, yeah. um, and also um, working with some of our different partners um, to really help them understand the terrific um, services that we offer to the community um, here in Oregon and Southwest Washington, as well as in Southern Idaho. 
And so what are some of the services that you offer through the organization? So there, there's, we offer a tremendous amount of information service, um, a lot of advocacy, um, as well as um, we do a lot of research. research. Yeah, yeah. so okay. locally, um, right now, we have $1.2 million worth of research happening. Wow. Um, here at OHSU and at the VA hospital, um, all around diabetes. And um, in addition to that, we have a few other programs that we implement throughout the year. We have a Safe at Schools program um, where we go in and train um, school faculty and personnel and the nurses to take care of kids with diabetes, oh, what to watch good. for. Mm -hmm. um, so that they can feel safe at school and have the same rights as other children and sure. go to the school of their choice. Sure. Um, we have a lot of other different programs um, to engage people. We have a free program called Living with Type 2 Diabetes mm -hmm. um, that's on our website and um, people can sign up and it really helps to guide um, folks who currently have type 2 diabetes um, to live healthier lifestyles. Right. Um, there's a create your plate section in there so that it becomes clearer about portion sizes, what types of things they eat, um, mm -hmm. as well as some um, fitness and exercise um, tips and opportunities. Huh. Um, we also offer a um, step out walk to stop diabetes um, in towards the end of September. Oh, okay. And then as well as a tour to cure which this summer it's a bicycle? Yes, yes, yeah, yes yeah. it's our it's our cycling event um, that's on um, August or I'm sorry July 20th. Great, um, great. at Hillsborough Stadium. Oh, fun! Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So th there's a lot of help for people out there with diabetes. Yes. A lot more than there used to be. Yes. You know? And it's um, and it's become so common, it, scarily common, <laughs> I think, that um, that it's really important to have all that help there. You talked about diabetes burnout. What do you what does that mean? You know, where you've had diabetes for quite some time and you're just tired of having it, so mm -hmm. maybe you don't take as good of care of yourself as you had in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody kind of rolls through that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just cyclic. Um, and so Dr. Fulop is gonna come and share some information just how to stay, how to stay focused, how to stay positive. Because mm, okay. um, it that is hard sense. when you have a chronic disease, something that you have to think about every day. Yeah. Eventually uh, you'll say, you know what, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tired done. of this. Yeah, I'm done. I don't want to work on this anymore. Sure, that's mm -hmm. understandable. Uh, we don't have very much time left, so what else, what else do you want us to know? What do you want your viewers to know about diabetes? You might want to share that risk test website and how else they can get to it through Facebook. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so to take the diabetes risk test, um, it can be taken at um, www www.diabetes.org slash risk test. Okay. Um, if it is taken between um, March 26th and um, April 7th, uh -huh. um, Boar's Head will be donated $5 per risk test oh, wow. to the American Diabetes wow. Association. Um, which is really terrific, that's and they will great. donate up to fifty thousand dollars. Oh, that's wonderful! So everyone should definitely mark their calendars for March twenty-sixth to take the risk test. So I've already taken it. Can I take it again? Absolutely. Things may have changed. Yes. Right? You never that's know. You never know. <laughs> and um, I think the other important thing that I'd like to mention is that um, I think it's important for people in Oregon and Southwest Washington to know that there are three hundred and fifty thousand people here in our community um, with diabetes. Wow. And there's another 650,000 who have prediabetes. So over a million people just in Oregon and Southwest Washington um, are currently affected by diabetes. So we really want to offer and all the resources we can sure. to help. And that's one in three people. That's a lot. That is one that's in three. Lot. So yes. So people need to be really aware of the of the risk factors. Check mm -hmm. it out, and then you know they can go to their doctor and check out your website and get some get some help. And when yeah. you take the test, please share it because we want it to be had by everyone. So if everybody would take it and then have their family member or friend also take the risk test. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And I'll a great sure way to, to do, do that. that is Facebook. It is, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and people can go on the Facebook page then between March 26th and, and uh, April 9th. And April 9th and then let people know about it and bring yes. some more money. Absolutely. Good deal. Please. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, yeah, you. thank you, Michael. Thank you, Mandy. I appreciate all the information about the American Diabetes Association and the risk tests. And uh, people be sure to check out the expo. That's coming up on uh, May 4th. Yes. Great.
Thanks for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Donate Life Northwest. So please don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs>